go. As we close out the week, we're going to close out the book of Ruth, but it's been such a lovely story that we've shared together. And today we're going to finish out uh, chapter 4, picking up in verse 17. The neighbor women said, Now at last Naomi has a son again, and they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. This is a genealogical record of their ancestor Paris. Paris was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nation. Nation was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David. So Ruth has quite an honored position. <laughs> yes, she is uh, the, the grandmother, so to speak, of, of King David. So mm -hmm. it's really remarkable when you think about that. But then, of course, when you get over to the book of Matthew, you discover that she's actually in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Yes, in fact, Matthew's uh, genealogy has some very unusual stories in it. Well, it is true. And Matthew uh, lists, of course, the men, the that are in the genealogy of Jesus, but there are four women mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus. And what's interesting about these four women is that for various reasons, they might've been the four women most uh, people would have left out. And yet they are the only ones that God put in there that like Chris Tamar from a very sad story in Genesis 38. And then, you know, there's Ruth and we know about her. She's a Moabite. Oh, yeah. And then there's Bathsheba. And, and you look at these ladies, and it, to me, it's a picture of God's grace, you know, because they're in the story of Jesus, and the wonderful truth is that Jesus can redeem anyone's life. Yes, but hopping back to the genealogy for just a minute, Matthew chapter 1, because you left one out. I did. So, but you, did you do that on purpose? <laughs> okay. Well, I thought you might want to tell um, us about it. Okay, so it's not mentioned in the book of Ruth, but if you read it, Matthew, you'll find out that Boaz's mother is, a, is an unusual person. His mother is Rahab. That's right. Rahab the harlot that was uh, rescued the, the spies in Jericho. Well, we believe that Solomon was one of the spies. Probably. He was one of the two spies that Joshua sent over there. And so, uh, obviously, he knew Rahab. And I'm sure that when Rahab came back with her family and became part of the family of Israel, Solomon said, hey, if you need anybody to kind of coach you up on how we do things. Mm -hmm. And then those became dates. And then... Well, when you think Boaz, as he is watching yeah. Ruth, he would have had a soft spot in his heart for a woman that would have been otherwise an outcast yeah. because he'd been brought up by his mother, and, and surely that gave him a different perspective on life. It's just a fascinating story. If you grow up with Rahab being your mother, telling yes. you the stories mm. of God's deliverance and God's redemption, uh, when you see a woman like Ruth, you're like, wow, she reminds me of mom. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I do too. Well, you know, in a sense, we're all part of Jesus' story. I don't mean that we're, our names are in the Bible necessarily, but when you come to faith in Jesus, you become part of his story. And any of us can look at our lives and we know ourselves better than anyone else knows us. We all know reasons why on our own behavior, on our own merit, we would not belong in Jesus' story. And yet because of his grace, because his blood was shed for us. We're part of Jesus' story. Yes, isn't that wonderful? That we're, and our story fits into his story. It's like he's written a script for us in his story, and that's quite an honor. And that story continues on. Yes, can forever, actually. It goes on forever. I think, uh, in fact, I remember you used to lead a particular small group where the idea was to find your place in find the story. Find your place in his story. It, it's about his story. You know, if, if we were the star of our life's dreams, and we were greatly successful, so much so that everyone in the world applauded us. That applause would eventually die out. That's right. But when we fulfill our part in God's story, the uh, blessings are eternal. They never stop. The applause never ends. And so it's so much better to invest our life as part of his story than to try to get him to feed our uh, narrow uh, story for our own glory. That's so true. Well, it was a great place to end the book of Ruth, isn't yes. it? This little four chapter uh, book, wonderful, sweet story. And yet it's also a marvelous lesson on God's redemption and God's restoration. Yes, and um, this is a good time for us to stop and have prayer, Margaret, to lead us. I will. Father God, we love this story. Thank you for putting it in the Bible. And Lord, thank you that you are the God who can take grief like Naomi experienced and turn it into joy. 
that you are the God who could find someone like Ruth who is in the wrong place with the wrong belief system with no hope and then turn that person's life through the blood of Jesus to a life of glory. And you've done that for us. We thank you for everyone who's part of Noah's window. We pray that your blessing and grace and help might be upon them as we go our various places today. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And you want to talk about the weekend because there's an exciting Well, weekend. we have a special message coming up this weekend, and it has to do with the kingdom that Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign in. And so it's going to be an exciting time. It's going to be a great message. And I can't wait for us all to hear it. I can't think of a subject I love any more than I love well, this one. You know, we read the Bible every morning. And of course, we're always reading from the Old Testament. It is amazing to me. How many of the 39 books of the Old Testament talk extensively about the thousand year millennial kingdom reign that we know of is Jesus. Obviously the people of the old covenant, they just knew the kingdom was coming, but uh, there's so many marvelous truths about that. And so as we read those, you know, you'll, you and I look at each other and we'll look at each other and say, that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. You know, we know it's a promise about that. Well, if you're depressed about today's headlines, just come and think about and listen to and study what's coming because it's wonderful. We have so much to look forward to. We sure do. Well, thank you, Mary Alice, and thank you for joining us on Noah's Window. God willing, we'll see you Monday. Yes, we'll see you next week. God bless.